Hi, my name is Doug. Welcome to Third Stall Garage. Today's project is working on a 2012 Chrysler Town & Country. Very similar to a lot of the Town & Countries as well as the Dodge Caravans. Going on a trip with this truck van this summer and we'll be pulling a small trailer and I want to take care of my transmission so we are installing a transmission cooler. I'm going to show you how you can do it at home as well. It doesn't seem to be too big of a project. I've got a great friend here tonight, Dallas DeYoung. He's going to be helping me out as well. Stay tuned to learn. Stay tuned to learn how you can do this as well. Thank you. So we've made some progress in installing the radiator cooler. You can see that we have the grill and the front bumper cover removed. Here it is sitting on the ground. Overall, fairly easy to remove. Um, there are a 10 millimeter screw in the top here, plastic pin, plastic pin, plastic pin. There is a um, small screw. It looks like it's about a 10 millimeter and then a couple screws. So the 10 millimeters right here goes up from the bottom and then one, two screws on the side here as well. Same thing on the far side. And then on the bottom of the bumper cover, there's one, two, three, four uh, plastic screws that hold it in on the side. Uh, there's nothing on this corner. There is a plastic tab on the driver's side corner that has to come off as well. Next, we ran the car for a little while, and here behind the radiator are the two radiator, sorry, transmission coolant lines. Uh, ran the car for a while, took it out for a short drive. The top one seems to be getting warmer faster than the bottom one. Uh, that makes me think that the top is the one that flows out from the transmission. The bottom is the one that returns. That's the one that we wanna splice into for the tranny cooler. On the, behind the, by the radiator here. Uh, so this would be the return line. This would be uh, the output line from the transmission. Pull this little plastic cap off. And uh, here's the little clip that came off of right there. And now this line should pull away. And then we're going to kind of pull it off to the side and splice in uh, the new tranny cooler, which will mount to the front of the radiator here. So the theory behind the path of the fluid flow is this, and I, I'm refilming this later because I wanted to get it right and get it clearly. The hot fluid comes out of the transmission and we want it to go into the stock radiator first, which is why we cut the return line. So we did not cut the, the feed line of the hot fluid from the transmission. So the hot fluid goes through the stock radiator cooler that came with the car first. That is behind the, trans, that is behind the radiator. So the cold air comes in, it gets warmed up by the condenser and the radiator, and then it goes into the, tr the stock tranny cooler that lowers the temperature of the transmission fluid. Instead of having it return to the transmission, we're gonna then route it into the auxiliary cooler that will be in front of the radiator and condenser, which will hit the coolest, freshest air coming in, which will remove the remaining heat out of the transmission fluid, and then we'll route it into the return line to the transmission. So your flow goes from the transmission to the stock rate, sorry, the stock transmission cooler to the aftermarket cooler and then back to the transmission. Hopefully that makes sense. So the next task is to take the hose and slip it onto the radiator. Uh, seems pretty simple, ended up being quite problematic for us. This hose was super tight fitting on the end of this aluminum tube. Uh, there's a ribbon there to get it over. We tried heating it up, tried a little bit of silicone, uh, couldn't get it to press on, messed up the fins a touch, got them bent back together. 
One of the things we found that helped was to take the tube, and I have an old scrap piece here, and I simply shoved two screwdrivers in and then grabbed the screwdrivers and pulled them apart to stretch the end of the tube enough to the point where we could get it on um, onto there. And then the kit comes with hose clamps that will simply go right over top of the rib on the inside and that will lock it down tight. Now we're heading over to the car where Dallas is working on putting in the clips that go into the radiator to hold it. So it's kind of like a long zip strip plastic nail that goes in from the back side. You got to kind of reach around with your hands, stick it in there until it pops out on the back side. There's a big square soft washer that goes on and then the radiator will fit on top of that and we'll trim them to length. Um, and then it will just sit here in the front of the, I think it's actually a condenser um, and cool the radiator. It's a little tricky. We first pulled all these through, all the way through. Um, it can be a little tricky afterwards, making sure that you get that lined in the cor correct corresponding um, locations on here. So we pushed two of them back and we'll feed one through uh, to start. And and that should line us up. Probably um, need to get behind there. Yeah, we'll tuck this hose back there for now. And now once we line this up pretty tight, we should be able to push those other two back through. Voila, <laughs> two more over there and she's mounted. So the top hose coming out of the cooler goes through here. You can see it right there, comes out, connects right into this bottom radiator hose. Um, now the other piece right here that comes out of the top of the stock radiator cooler will attach to this loop, but it goes 180 degree bend. So it comes, it comes from the bottom of the cooler, snakes through the firewall here. Then we go through a nice big loop and it will go back into the, the radiator cooler there. I'll show you what it looks like in a second. All right, we have a finished product. Dallas is snipping the ends of those off. The two coolant lines go through the firewall. Uh, the bottom one comes back out here. The top one continues on. We are able to tuck this loop without it. You don't want any tight radiuses in there or it could collapse and everything's nice and loose. Plenty of room, not rubbing on anything. Should be great. Well, uh, Check the transmission fluid level, reassemble the front of the grill, bumper and everything, and we should be good to go. Hope it goes well for you too. Thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and uh, just hope someday you'll meet a man like Dallas DeYoung. <laughs> Thanks guys, have a great night.